In this video, we're going to discuss some common error message types that we might get when managing our Cisco IOS. So the message types that we're going to discuss are over here to the left, and then over to the right, we have the reasoning as to why we got those error messages in the first place. The first one that we're going to cover here is going to be ambiguous command. We can see the reasoning for this error message is because the CLI parser couldn't differentiate between commands. So your Cisco IOS is going to contain a command parser. And when you think of a command parser, it's kind of like it sounds, right? It's parsing, right? So I want you to envision like this huge file that contains all the commands. And when we're executing commands, it's going to essentially search through that file to see where those commands are unique. Now, what this is going to do for us inside the command line here is it's going to ease administration by providing the capability to execute the commands at their shortest form. It's also going to enable us to tab complete commands as well as provide us with some context sensitive help. And we're going to illustrate each of these. Now, something that you can relate this to that you might already be familiar with is when you visit a web page and you start entering some characters into a search field, and then the web page provides help by basically searching through probably like an array, you know, a bunch of strings, and then it's displaying to you kind of like, you know, it's trying to guess or figure out which words you're trying to type, right? It's kind of like that. So here we're going to try to execute the command enable by simply executing E. And then we get that error message. So now to investigate this, we're going to refer to that context sensitive help. Now your command parser is searching through all those commands. And now it's going to display within the command line here all the commands that begin with E. Now the reason for this message up here, like this implies, ambiguous, is because the command parser couldn't tell which command we were trying to execute because it wasn't unique. Where it is unique is on this second character over here with the N. Now because the command parser knows that this is the enable command because it's unique when it's doing its searching, that's all we have to execute in order to execute that command. So now the next error message type that I want to discuss is incomplete command. Over to the right, we can see the reasoning is because we did not complete the command syntax. So when you think of completing the command syntax, I just want you to think of like almost like a sentence, right? So with the sentence, it has to be grammatically correct. We have to have a noun, a verb, it has to have certain words in front of each other. It's kind of like that, but not really. So to generate this message, we're going to execute the clock command, and we're going to see that error message. Once again, to investigate, we're going to refer to Cisco's help, and we're going to see some second level command options that we can use to complete it. Now, because we're starting to understand the command parser, all we have to enter in here for a second level command is R because it's unique. However, rather than just putting an R here, what we can do is we can also tab complete the command. So now, once again, we can ask the system for help. We can say, now, is the syntax for the command complete? We will know that it is when we see the CR over here. So this CR stands for carriage return. It's kind of like an old typewriter way of saying, look, new line, right? But here, the way that we can think of this is it's saying, look, the syntax is complete, just press enter. Okay, and now we can see that the command successfully executes. So now the last error message type that I want to discuss is this invalid input detected at marker. We can see over to the right the meaning for this is because of incorrect syntax. When you think of incorrect syntax, I just want you to think of it as meaning kind of like it's, it's not understood, like the command's not understood. And this can occur because of many different reasons. It could be a spelling error. It could be if you have a complete command syntax that you don't have the proper spaces between the words. Or it could just be that the command is not understood. So to investigate this, once again, we're going to use that read calendar. And we're going to make a spelling error here. So with this error message, it's actually going to provide help with this little caret. And the caret is kind of like an indicator as to where the problem is, exists as to why it doesn't understand the command. So what you can do when you get this caret is you can refer to that help once again. So over here it's showing you that this is the command option that's available. This is how you correctly spell it. This is how it's understood. Now because of the command parser, we can simply just execute it like that. So now I'm going to go up to global configuration mode. 
and I'm going to try to execute this clock read calendar command and this second level command calendar read calendar is not understood in global configuration mode so when I try to execute it we can see once again we got that error message and now the indicator is on this command over here once again the way that you investigate this and I'm going to do a control W here twice and I'm going to use Cisco's help and we're going to see that the read calendar option is not available for our second level option for the clock command in global configuration mode. So now the last thing that I want to discuss here is kind of like how you can execute exec level commands in other configuration modes. So here we're in global configuration mode and we said we have many different sub configuration modes that we can access from global config. If you want to execute any exec level commands in these modes then you can use the do command and we can see that the command successfully executes.